What's going on everybody? Jay Hayes here since I'm going to be doing a review on a device that I picked up for the purposes of the review. Now, I wasn't even aware that the company that made the RSQ is now making RDAs. Granted, the same company that made the RSQ was Hot Sig and I believe Vaping Amp. The same people that made the Rig Mod. Also, the, uh, shit, I can't remember the name of the dripper. They also made a dripper for the Rig Mod had a bell on it. I got nothing. I, I can't remember the name of it. It's a single coil jammy. has a really, really awkward shape to it. It's almost like an upside down ovary. Not quite sure as to what it belongs on, but the name of this dripper is even more awkward. Castle RDA. I guess this is their attempt at making a single coil RDA just to join suit with all the other companies that are making a single coil. Again, I really, I don't know much about this just because I haven't heard anything and I really don't even know how many people are going to see this review because I'm not quite sure as to where you even purchased this. I saw this on one other site before and there really wasn't any information about it. Just said the diameter, dimensions, how much it weighed, and the company that made it. You know what it is? This is a product of the system. This is one of these products that no one hears about. The only way that it's marketed properly is who reviews it and how known that review is. There's a couple devices I could think of off the top of my head that are like that, like mods, there's a couple tanks, that the company didn't even bother even sending it out to reviewers, they just made it. And that's usually a problem with most companies, is if you're going to release a product and you're not going to release it to reviewers, SIG does that a lot, so does Freemax. Freemax hasn't done shit since 85. You release something, you don't send it to anybody, so how are the masses supposed to know about a device? if no one does a review on it, or there's any marketing properly. I guess that's where I come in. So I'm gonna talk about the uh, the castle. <laughs> you couldn't have picked any other name. Could have named this bridge, or the door, the pigeon, the toaster oven. It kind of looks like the top of the Taj Mahal. Not, not the one in Atlantic City, man. The real Taj Mahal, seven wonders of the world. No, do you see it? No, not the Taj Mahal. What's the one in Russia? The churches? St. Petersburg? I think that's a whole city. Okay. Let's flip it. So what we're looking at is the Hot Sig Castle RDA. Really not a whole lot of information about this. Just because I haven't seen a lot of people talk about it or post it. It was kind of new and I was like, oh, that's another RDA. Let me pick one up and let me see what it's all about. On the top, really nothing going on. So on the side, you have these little icons that are all over the place. On the other side, you have your social media. That is a lot of them. Twitter, Facebook, VK, YouTube, Instagram, Google Plus, and Pinterest. Who in the hell uses Pinterest anymore? This is like 1986. You know what the funny thing is? On all these social medias, with the exception of Pinterest, I am active on. Someone had made a comment to me on Reddit that I'm all over the place, and I am. I am literally on all social media avenues. As much as I would like to respond to every single person that ever messages me, I really only do to Patreon, but... I am on all these social medias. Maybe on my next device, I'll just put like 45 different social media icons on the side of it just to kind of promote it. I'm not really giving them shit. I'm just saying it is what it is. On the back of this, you have the Castle BFRDA accessory bag, which is what I call the peripheral bag, gold plated 510, and the user manual. This is the same company that created the RSQ Squonk Box Mod. UPC here, big ass warning, scratch and sniff. This is going to be a garlic, butter, butter, coconut, milk, flavor, and scented. You don't need to do anything special with this to get any of the specific flavors made in China. Inside the box. As soon as you open up, you can have this card, Hot Sig Castle User Manual, which is literally a piece of paper. Last time I checked, a user manual you have to open up. There's nothing to open up with this. It's literally just the card. It's a nice little card. Inside the peripheral bag, you're gonna get your Barbie screwdriver. One appears to be a fuse clapton of some sort. Some O-rings, Barbie screwdriver, some extra post screws, and then you're gonna get a studded 510 pin as the 510 pin that's in there is going to be the squonk pin. Also gonna get a PMMA cap, which is a really nice little addition. That's everything inside of the box. Someone the other day was doing a review on a dripper that had kind of this bulbous onion situation going on. I can't tell you what this looks like right off the jump, but I will tell you this. If you flip it this side up and you put a little stem on it, it would look like a little wine glass. Really minute airflow going on there. Not gonna lie, this is kind of ugly. 
The design of this is just not user friendly for your eye sockets. <laughs> just saying, it's not the prettiest. On the bottom, it's gonna say Castle RDA. Some little funky monkeys over here. Hotsigtech.com. Wiki, wiki. Oddly enough, the insulator for the 510 appears to be some type of dough, and it doesn't look like peak or peck. 510 drip tip on the top looks like a rook. Who knows what a rook is? Oh, shit. Just when you thought you knew me. You don't know. 510 drip tip. That is one tiny ass drip tip. Double O-ring. Let me show you a little bit about this deck. Kind of a unique situation. Single coil. Leg here, leg there. Looking at the post, you'll see that there is a little bit of a tooth that's raised up. That's to stop when you're screwing down the screw that it doesn't pull the leg out. Kind of holds it in place. And the same thing on the other side. The airflow on the side of this is about a 30 degree pitch, maybe 35. And that's good for the situation of it leaking. As you fill this up with juice, as you're dripping on it while you're squonking, it's going to be hard for the juice to come up at an angle and then squirt out of the side. At the same time, what happens with this is this forces you to really put your coil down if you want direct airflow. Depending on the size of your coil, if it's really big, it's going to be right over the squonk port, so it may not wick properly let me show you the coil we're going to be putting in this so uh, here we are again with these fucking flathead screws i'm getting so agitated with these screws i'm not quite sure as to why these companies are so set on using flathead screws i know the argument is that they don't strip that they're easy to use i disagree take a flathead screw all the way out and then try to put it back in there's nothing to set it in i don't know why we didn't go with some type of allen screw or or anything else other than a flathead screw. It's such a bad choice. We stopped using flathead screws back in fucking 75. So this is where the ledges are gonna come in. As you thread this down, usually what happens is because you're threading it to the right, it will catch the wire and then force it out. At least with this, as you pinch it down, that ledge stops it from doing so. Usually on single coil RDAs, there'll be a little bit of a cutout, which will allow you to put your jig or your screwdriver in to get that coil low set to line up perfectly perfectly with the airflow. This is lacking just that. You have one of two options. You can either pinch it with a pair of play you can either pinch it with a pair of pliers or tweezers and then try to bring it down manually or you could take an Allen key, not specifically this one, put it in and then push it down. And that's gonna allow you to really get that really low set. However, the way that I got this down with just the tweezers I feel is adequate enough as I don't wanna go any lower because it is gonna cover up the squonk pin. So let's cut the legs. Close your eyes. Nope. Nope, don't close them. Close them. Nope, okay. These pliers suck ass. I honestly can't tell you I know three people that would prefer a flathead screw. Of course, you know you're gonna get those assholes that are comment down below. Yeah, man, I love them. No, you don't. You are lying through your teeth. Nobody loves flathead screws. Shit, even companies hate them. Granted, they are the easiest to make. You just take a piece of metal and just slam a fucking screwdriver through it. 0.74 build. Simple enough, there it is, lighten up. Easy breezy, sunburn and easy. So you see, even me pushing that down and it actually encasing the coil, the juice isn't gonna come out because it has to go really, really high. All right, once again, that is the dildo by Hot Seg. Let's bring it on the top. All right, guys, so we are back on the top of the Castle RDA by Hot Seg, sitting on top of the Lizard Delrin DNA 75C Squawker. Here we go. 44.5 watts at 0.74. Okay, here's the situation with this. First off, let me tell you, the flavor is amazing. The airflow, although it looks like it's gonna be a lot tighter than what it is, it's not that bad. The only problem I really have with this dripper per se is the way that it looks. 
I feel like it's one of the most ridiculous jumpers that I've seen come out of China ever. Well, no, there's been a couple that have been very questionable. The thing is with this dripper, there's not much room for innovation, meaning that if you want to use a different top cap, you really can't. You want to use a different drip tip, you can, but it's going to look silly. And that's because of the way that this is designed. It, it sort of looks like one of those bells that you would put on a hotel desk, you know, kind of pick up and you... I'm pantomiming how you would ring the bell, or like a dinner bell just without the rod. I think a dinner bell is the one that hangs. I, 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 it doesn't even matter at this point. I hate saying this about this dripper because I almost feel like it's ridiculous to buy this based off the way that it looks. And I know you can use the argument that the J, it's just an aesthetic. It's just the way that it looks. It's not the way it functions. You're right. And clearly you can hear that the airflow is really substantial even being how small those ports are on the side of this. It makes me scratch my head because there's some drippers that have bigger airflow slots and have a tighter draw than this does with those small airflow slots. I feel like such a tool. <laughs> I don't know if you went somewhere and you pulled this out how many people would take you seriously. It's like what I'm about ready to say is like almost incriminating. If you put your lips on this, the tip actually feels really good. When have you ever seen a castle that looks like an onion? I don't even think that's a thing. I don't. Unless, of course, we're talking about the very tippy top of like the Taj Mahal or like the Russian churches. They may not be churches. They may just be buildings. The things with the ball with the pointy thing on the top. That's what this kind of reminds me of. Too. There's just a lot of things going on with this dripper. I'm not quite sure as to why they went with this design, but listen, I can't fault it for functionality. I can fault it for aesthetics. Functionality concerned, it's a really solid dripper. The airflow is really good. The flavor is really good. A lot of people think that single coil drippers are not going to be good for flavor. You're going to get more flavor out of a dual coil. That's not necessarily the case. With this, because the chamber is reduced, it is a 22 millimeter, although it looks funny, it's not a bad dripper. Really, I have to deduct at least two points off just because the way that this thing looks. Another really nice thing with this is because the way that the airflow is really high set and at an angle, it's going to be very difficult for you to get to leak. Now that's a rarity in single coil drippers. Usually the airflow is really low set and then the juice will just fall out and go all over the place. That's going to be difficult with this dripper. Would I recommend this dripper? Oh man, not not if you care about your sexuality. Not if you care about how the people feel you look. If you care about what the person next to you thinks about your sexuality, you may think twice about buying this. Now, for those of you that like the peepees, you may like this. Every time I vape on this, I just feel a certain type of way. Here, you vape it and you let me know your thoughts. Did you feel it? Oh, you didn't get a good head? Hold on. What do you think? Get it. Get it? No. Do you, do you, do you get it? Let's just keep it real. The way that it looks, I feel really, really hurts the rating of this device. If I was to rate this device on a zero to 10, I'm gonna go five. I may even go four. Really, the biggest fault I have is just the way that this looks. It's gonna cater to a very small niche amount of people. I don't feel like it's the most aesthetically pleasing. You can't use an A10 drip tip, but then again, it is a flavor chasing RDA. It's just that I don't know what kind of flavor you're gonna get out of a dripper like this. Maybe chlorine. I've kept it real. Have you? Jay, he's out.